default pursuant to section 120.08 subsection 2 Wisconsin statutes upon motion of the school board at the meeting held July 17, 2017. Meeting and note, or notice of meeting. Notice of special meeting was published in the Muskego Now on August 3rd, 2017 and August 10th, 2017. Purpose of this meeting, the meeting was called for the purpose of authorizing the acquisition of a site for school district purposes. Any other business is beyond the scope of the special meeting and is out of order. People with concerns or comments regarding school district issues outside the scope of this meeting are invited to present them to the school board at any of its meeting, other regular meetings. Um, moving on to item three, call for nomination for chairperson. Could I get a nomination for someone for the chair? I nominate Rick Petrovalski. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other? Hearing none, all those in favor of the nomination for myself being the chairperson of this meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Item five, consideration of resolution offering site acquisition regarding section 120.10 subsection five of the Wisconsin statutes. Sure. Be it resolved by the electors of the Muskego Norway School District that the school board be authorized to acquire by purchase or condemnation under Chapter 32 of the Wisconsin State Statutes, real estate or structures and facilities pertinent to such real estate necessary for the school district purposes as set forth in Section 120.10 sub 5M of the Wisconsin Statutes. The site is located as described in the attached Exhibit A, which is incorporated herein by this reference. Can I get a motion for that at least? So moved. Second from anyone? Second. All right. So, special annual meetings. Everyone here that's a Muskego or Norway resident can participate in voting, discussion, and so forth. So, I see a number of people here. Does anyone have questions before we go forward or what, what we're asking to do and what we and how we're going to do it? Anyone? No? All right. So the idea, of a, just a quick synopsis, we're looking to purchase a piece of property for emergency access to the Lake De Moon, or not Lake, the Muskego Lakes um, facility um, at the request of the city. They requested a secondary emergency exit. Um, we're looking at purchasing a piece of property um, for those purposes. All that being said, we're just going to, instead of doing an actual ballot, we'll just do a show of hands. So all those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get a motion to adjourn the special meeting? Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Special meetings adjourned at 7.15. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
No, I'm all working out play. Trust me. And the last time we went out, the last time we had it out, it didn't go well. Why? Something that had been working ever since we had the boat all of a sudden. All right. <laughs> Because you don't use it at all. Oh, really? Tell me. You use it. All right, we're proceeding with the actual school board meeting that has been started and uh, hold. We're on item three, reconvening the open session. We're reconvening at 717. Uh, moving on to item four, consent. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to back up. Um, we do never did the pledge. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, moving on to item 4, consent agenda. Did I get a motion? So moved. Second. Anything in consent agenda that needs separate questions or consideration? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. consent. <laughs> Say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, student representation doesn't take place until I believe next week or following. Oh, right. um, public forum. That's you. <laughs> um, anyone wishing to or discuss or bring anything to the school board's attention? This is your opportunity to do it. That would be you. <laughs> Since you're not standing up, we're going to move on. Uh, moving on to item seven, superintendent's report. Actually, Colleen is here from Topper, and um, our first item is to have um, the annual report to the board from food service. And I'm just going to move that board, Colleen, if you want to. Come and stand up here. Do you feel comfortable? Otherwise, you can sit next to Christy, too, if you like. Or maybe you'd like. Okay. All right. I can stand. Be seen. <laughs> good evening, everybody. Good evening. It's good to see you all. I hope everybody had a nice summer. Um, so I just want to do a brief report on how our, our program is operating. 16-17 um, was overall a very successful year for us. Um, not only were we able to keep our budget in the black this year, um, we also had a very successful audit for our national school lunch program sites. So two very positive things. Um, I want to share some of our program successes with you all. Um, and I have kind of a flip book here of like the highlight reel, so I'll pass that around. Yeah. Um, so at the high school level, um, the Warrior Way Cafe was open all day last year, and that proved to be very successful. We're open and available to students from 7.30 in the morning until 2.30 in the afternoon. So we, we saw a lot of um, students as well as faculty um, come down and, and eat with us, grab a cup of coffee, tea. Um, Sorry. <laughs> and um, we are looking at, you know, keeping on top of trends at the high school and um, feedback has been very positive at our high school level. Um, at the elementary school level, we uh, launched the Kids in the Kitchen program where Chef Luke, um, Julie Steer, and I went out and cooked with the kids um, in fourth grade. And we did it at three sites, and it was very popular, a lot of fun, and we did pizza and um, salads. So students got to make their own pizza from scratch um, and then learn how to make vinaigrettes using the correct balance of vinegar and oil. And then they got to bring food home to their families. This was all done free of charge um, just for the learning opportunity for the students. Um, we also participated in the Great Apple Crunch at the elementary school level. Uh, this was in support of um, Farm to School Month. We purchased local apples from Bossy's Farm all fall while they're available, but this was another opportunity to support them um, as well as um, give that healthy message to our elementary school students um, where students throughout the Midwest um, all crunched an apple at the same time on the same day. So um, it, was, it was a fun event to see, and we have lots of uh, neat pictures in our flipbook from that. Um, at the middle school level, we um, Chef Luke visited middle schools once a month, and that was very popular for students to get to interact with him on a monthly basis. 
Um, we also participated in the Amazing Race at Bay Lane at the end of the year, as well as a School Meals Rock video at Lake De Noon. Uh, both included a blind taste test, ironically, uh, which was a lot of fun to do. Um, we also did a survey last spring for parents and students. Um, we received 740 responses, which I think is pretty good. Um, and we're finding that the majority of their parent, the majority of our parents are encouraging their students to eat fruits and vegetables, to take a full meal. They're reviewing menus with their, their kids and helping them make healthy choices, which I think is really positive. Um, we are still seeing some of the, you know, going away from the whole grain, no more Obama food we, we see in the survey, and um, larger portion sizes, which are, you know, all part of our meal plan. Meal plan. Um, so some of our challenges that we're seeing and that also came up in the survey is students not having enough time to eat. Uh, At which level? All levels. All levels. Elementary, middle. Um, so I think this is a combination of maybe the lunch periods being too short. We're still having issues with students not bringing their cards, which is slowing up the lines. Uh, but we do continue to do analysis of how fast we're getting students through the line, how fast we're able to serve them to see if there's any improvements that we can make on our end as well. Just chip them. <laughs> Just chip them. Oh, gosh. That would fly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, looking forward to 2017-2018, um, we're going to continue to grow the Kids in the Kitchen program. I'm looking forward to expanding that as well. Um, we're going to participate in the Great Apple Crunch again. It's scheduled for Thursday, October 12th of this year. Um, and just doing a lot of planning for the opening of the new school and the new kitchen at No Valley. The Kids in the Kitchen program, so is that, uh, is that incorporated to the, in, in the curriculum at all, or how are the kids chosen, or tell me a little bit more um, about that. It's first come, first serve, so we... During the school, is it during the school day? It's after school. After school. Yeah, so it's a few hours after school, um, so parents sign their children up and have to give us, you know, a release to, to participate. Okay. So, just to have the warrior Oh, yeah. The word yes. what? Oh. On Thursday, both windows is the only day we do that. <laughs> so the not having enough time to eat, um, I've heard that a lot. I've heard that a lot from my own kids who are in elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is, I think, a bigger deal than um, it, it would be nice to figure out some way to get them in line. Observations that I heard is that it is the swiping, and, uh, and it could be, you know, school specific. In my case, that it's just very, very. It's smart. not school specific. It's not. Okay. <laughs> this uh, is really. I've heard this since my kids were in kindergarten, yeah. and ones that just turned 21. So it's been forever. <laughs> and I don't think it's just food service. I, I agree with you. It's almost like you need those time management studies where they go in, right, and they watch to figure out a more effective way, an efficient way. But, right, I, it, I'm not by any means saying it's you guys. It's some combination. It is something you know? because my, my little guy who's six, he does not want to take school lunch. Right. He can't eat enough and he's starving by the time you have to. That's what I hear, right? I mean, everything over the top of your six. But it is a bigger deal when you've got kids that need to get the energy for the rest of the day when they don't when they can't finish. So um, I think that's I don't know how to solve that, but it's a huge issue. Or even if they do take the lunch and their buddy has a bag lunch and their their friend is outside playing and they just sat down with their hot lunch. Right, because they just sat down. Right? They don't want to. They don't want to finish their lunch. They want to go play with their friends. Well, they also make. They had a bag lunch. Well, if you're going to be perfect, you have a game, a ball game, you can't. You, you can't be late. Well, you can't play. You're not good for if you're not out there, right? <laughs> yeah, I would agree. It's, it's probably a lot of a lot of different factors, um, but if we could solutions, that would be good. Yeah, we tell the tech and it's not at school day. You're all going to scream. Do, with the renovations and the, is there any more efficiencies that we foresee? That's a great question. Um, stop with the chip that would work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there is a fingerprint 
Yeah, yeah. we do have fingerprint um, opportunities that we can use with the software. It's just very expensive. Right. Um, and we could consider that. What's very I mean, expensive? Um, Thousand no, bucks. That's not no, no. We looked at it last year. That was or something. Or when we transitions, I'll I'll come back to you with that. We'll come back with some. We do have fun balance we can use. It would it would save a little time on those students that forget their cards that they have to type in the number or type in their name uh, and look them up doing that. Mm -hmm. Are they just spiked now otherwise? Yeah. No. So. Or well, we can do a blood draw for a DNA sample. They will not forget that card again. <laughs> do we have enough of staff? Um, we do have enough staff. Okay, so we're serving fast enough? Yeah. I haven't waited 10 minutes. I'm just, just mm -hmm. serving the question. I just want to make sure. We did, as part of our audit um, for this year, go school to Colleen and I went school to school, and you observe the practices that are happening. and. Um, I won't say which ones, but there I, I can say for middle schools, there is one middle school that's pretty strict about using the cards, and there's one that isn't, and you can see the difference in how long it takes to serve food because the kids who forget their cards, it takes such a long time to process. And they do actually have separate lines, so the kids who remember their card can get through faster, and the ones that don't have to wait in this other line, which does help in some cases. Um, but at the elementary schools, too, I mean, they've done a lot to try to, they use the popsicle sticks and they use all the different things that you can do, and it's still, some, in some, I mean, if we added more lines to put kids through, we would need more space within our facilities. So, I don't know if that, if you have the same thoughts about that. Mm -hmm. Mill Valley, with the improvements there, may be more helpful with how the design is going to be. It should be, yeah. Um, and probably uh, at the middle school for sure, it's just a different concept. So hopefully with the middle school, um, Muskego Lakes will be better, but we can study it. I mean, this, that can be something we can focus on this year to try to make it a priority that, you know, along with working with, you know, the principals and with Don and Christine a little bit, just to look at, you know, I mean, this middle school schedule is something that's being looked at now, so that's all incorporated as part of it, so. And we can look at the finger, we'll look at the fingerprint until it stops reading accurately or somebody just got smudged on their finger. And yeah, <laughs> but um, other than that, um, any other questions? Otherwise, we can talk briefly about the financials. Thanks for getting uh, into thank schools. You very much. That's, those programs are great. Yeah, yeah really neat. Thank you. Um, so while Colleen's here, we do have um, the information um, that they prepared for us just to show the program revenues and expenses. Um, we did anticipate um, about a $20,000 profit this year. Um, you'll see that the profit is um, came in at about $92,000. And that really is a direct result of that Warrior Cafe. Um, we did make about $1,400 a day um, through Warrior Cafe, which is a significant amount of money. Um, one of the things that we will be looking for, that we would have been looking um, forward at this year was to request the purchase of a dishwasher, the high school dishwasher. It's on its last leg and we, it's about a $45,000 purchase. So we would have asked um, the board if we could use fund balance to purchase that. So this will help um, we have about $360,000 of fund balance currently, um, and that fund balance can only be used on food service items. So um, if we want to start looking at how we can utilize those dollars, we were also brainstorming um, ways that we could use some of that money to purchase some of the items that are currently budgeted in the referendum, freeing up the f um, fund balance dollars that we were going to use anyway for the referendum project. Um, so that could help to support um, lowering what we need to put in um, from Fund 10. Um, another thing Kelly and I talked about today was um, Fund 50, when we use fund balance, it doesn't affect our tax levy. So that could help with some of the tax levy um, increases that we could see if we use too much fund balance too soon. So other than that, though, you'll see that our meal counts um, at the elementary level are still down um, and continue to decline and we are working on that. Middle school numbers actually went up this year, which was a positive. Um, we did list the free and <coughs> lunch numbers. And then from the meal equivalent perspective, um, those are the high school meals and you'll see that those went up by almost 211 meals this year. So. Um, that was significant for us. So our average daily revenue is about just under $11,000 for our food service program. Any other questions? Okay, 
Well, I do want to thank Colleen and um, the Taher staff. I think they do a fabulous job of really trying to figure out what our kids want um, and trying to provide the food that's going to get them to participate in the program while keeping it as healthy as possible um, and within the guidelines. Um, they did an excellent job on our audit this year. Um, actually, the auditors that came in, and it's a federal audit that, that we participate in, um, came in and actually want to use some of the practices that are in place here to show other districts how they should be doing things. So that was actually a <coughs> positive and kudos to Taher for having those things in place. What does the audit cover? Everything. Everything. <laughs> I mean, not just financial, but how much food you carry, how, how old it is, what your the declaration yeah, they, is. they look at our menus, make sure that our menus, um, we're following national school guidelines. Um, they look at the staffing, I mean, really everything with the program, making sure that we're in line with the government regulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item is just an update to the board on our summer school, summer school attendance. As you know, we've over the last four years have really strategically uh, targeted that area, not only from the standpoint of learning and really getting the students involved during the summer, uh, but also from a fiscal standpoint. So Jeff has some numbers that <coughs> taken right out of our quality report that we're um, creating right now for um, 16 17. Yeah, so I, just to be able to put together a, a program such as this, it doesn't happen by accident, but instead through the very intentional efforts of our leaders. And you see them um, noted there, but John McEwen, Laura Coons, Michelle Plashines, and Ken Dunbar have done a phenomenal job um, really growing our program from what used to be support and what we would say are closing the gap courses to bring students closer to proficiency. We now have opened it up to a multitude of enrichment courses. And the feedback from our parents has been really positive. The students have loved it. And we have more and more staff involved in really supporting students and exploring interests that they have during the summertime. So really feel very fortunate to have staff and administration that lead those particular efforts. You can see the numbers in that particular graphic that's being displayed there. Uh, the trend not only for our K-8 program, uh, continues to show an uh, upward trend of uh, increased involvement, number of students involved, as well as our high school, too. So kudos to them. Uh, besides the um, academic outcomes that, that we gain from this and, and really developing interest in kids, there's a financial piece to it, too. At this juncture, we don't have the report completed. Um, that's still being, uh, still being worked on to really truly understand the financial implications that this has for us as we continue to grow our summer school program. So really, really exciting news for Mosquito Norway. Well, thanks for the update. Appreciate it. Um, let's see. Middle school and high school schedule updates. Christy? Sure. This is just really a quick update. Um, the last time we talked about the middle school schedule, we gave you guys um, a timeline of events that have taken place since February and where we are today with the middle school schedule. And on August 1st, um, there was a meeting with all Encore teachers to talk about uh, the middle level elective options and revising or modifying courses. Um, and so we're looking at modifying and revising several of the um, family and consumer education, business, and art courses. Some of the new courses are kind of exciting that were being brainstormed. Um, of course, the health and wellness at grade five. Art and Design, which is complemented actually by a new course that the high school's proposing um, called Digital Photography and Graphic Design. And so it's, re it's really about using art in uh, out into the real world in, um, in careers, um, things like marketing, um, graphic design, that sort of thing. Um, we're looking at bringing coding in. Right now it looks like it could be at grade eight, grade eight although we were also considering grade six based on staffing and um, when our teachers are available. It will just depend on where it lands. 
Um, and then the high school is going to be putting through a proposal for robotics for a class, not just the first robotics club. So those are exciting. Um, those will all be going through the CPC in September and October, and so you'll be learning more about those shortly. Um, the high school team is also looking at an advisory period and how to better support all students, whether it's in um, enrichment or um, extension opportunities or really opportunities for kids to meet with teachers um, if they have certain needs. And so they're looking at how to fit in an advisement during their current court, um, school day and how to, best, how to best utilize the minutes of the day. And so we'll be sharing their concept um, probably within the next month or so. As people get back to school and committees start to form again, um, they'll be putting together a presentation for you and, and slotting some time at an upcoming board meeting. Um, as I hear tonight with Taher speaking regarding lunch periods, we'll keep that into consideration as we're looking at some of the schedules to see if we can do something different with the lunch periods as well to, to help alleviate some of those lines. Any questions for Kristen? I, I do have one for the middle school. Uh, when we first switched to the middle school years ago, um, one of the things we kind of incorporated into the regular classes was writing. Is that going to maintain the same or are we going to have any special classes for writing? There will be no classes specific for writing. Um, writing has been integrated into the yeah, curriculum. Yes. Uh, the last board meeting, did you say that there was going to be more parental involvement at some point? Yes. Um, both of the middle schools um, had opportunities at their registration okay. um, for parents to look at the new schedule and get input. Um, I have seen some of the comments. They were very positive, although um, that was just from late to noon. Um, I haven't heard from Bay Lane's results yet, but um, we were gathering information from parents as well. Okay. And did that... Um did that explain, did, was there some background to it, things like that? that just because of the, the last, you know, the miscommunication that was out there prior, mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure that we had the correct information and that parents had access to it on what was being considered. So that was at that, that was at the registration. Yeah, registration. Fabulous, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Great question. All right, the next item is um, the 2017-18 in the goal, and so you have just a hard copy on your desk of what we shared with you last time. It's already been uploaded to the website. And, um, every year we have a little bit of a different look and you know, we have a horizontal view. And, you know, uh, again, much is, is the same. Our goals on the other side for 2017-18, the outcome measures are specific and um, for you with others and all staff will be receiving them um, over the next two weeks, this week and next week when they um, gather. So uh, m uh, most of the buildings, with the exception of Test Corners, will be meeting um, with their staff tomorrow. Test Corners has um, a, a work day tomorrow and then they, have, they switch it off and so the rest of the schools have one of those work days next week. Um, and then we have three what we call dark green days next week. Um, and so all staff members will be receiving that and then they put that up in their work area. Um, with their teacher, custodian, and whoever, but it, wherever. But keep, keep our focus on, on that. Just a reminder, uh, our two summer institute days are coming up this Wednesday and Thursday. And so um, we're really excited to um, be beginning our long-term professional development plan. And I don't know if you have anything you'd like to share regarding that. There's lots of materials and you know, just ready for a very engaging uh, opportunity with our staff and it's been very positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we received two large pallets of curriculum that will be shared um, with our teachers um, according to their discipline and the grade levels that they teach. Um, Dawn and I started setting up rooms today, so it's very exciting to unpack the boxes. It feels like a holiday. Um, but I've been in contact. Um, the presenters have been texting me, emailing me, and calling me because um, we have 11 different people coming in. 
and they're all so positive, and they're going to be coming in early tomorrow to set up some things in the rooms, and it'll be very exciting. So, um, thank you, Chrissy. And uh, the last item is the contributions to the profession, and that concludes this report. Thank you. Moving on with other reports. President's report, I uh, have none. Any board member reports? <laughs> Hearing none, moving on to resolution action items. Item 9A, 2017-18 board goals. Motion to approve 2017-2018 board goals as presented. So moved. Second. Discussion. Okay. Yeah, I was say, in front of you, you've got the goals that were presented to us last board meeting. Any feedback or discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Moving on to 9B, alternative revenue requests. Motion to approve alternative revenue request as presented below. So moved. Second. Discussion. Actually, Jeremiah is here. He's um, really taken on a lead, um, so the board knows, starting in 1718, related to alternative revenue from the standpoint of working with Gridiron and building some of those community relations. And so um, thank you, Jeremiah, for taking on that um, leadership role in that area. And we are now meeting with uh, Gridiron every other week, and I think Rick's going to try to join us um, at our next meeting. But we met with him twice and really trying to work through some of this new territory with regard to sponsorships and advertising and all of that. It's, it's new for the district. We're excited about it. They're excited. Um, we're at a point where we're not um, ready for some of the long-term commitments related to some banners and some other advertising. So we're kind of taking a first step, um, kind of slow into it, uh, one year um, kind of uh, relationships or agreements with um, so with what Gridiron is trying to work through. So, Jeremiah, if you want to share what we have so far? Sure. There's a, a number of things that kind of stem starting with Impro and then following with the youth football. Um, but the group, the Gridiron, continue to meet with uh, folks in the community, mostly businesses at this time. So uh, two of the things that kind of have operational implications are Pop's Kettle Corn and Maddie's uh, Restaurants. Uh, both of them this year, uh, for a fee, will be operating um, out of the, the stadium. So uh, those fees are noted. Both of them wanted long-term fees, but we thought the best approach would be to try this out for a year, since our concession stand is kind of uh, in limbo until that's completed, and uh, see if there's a comfort level moving forward. Uh, we still do have internal school programs that are willing to run these programs. Uh, but last year it was run by the Gridiron, so uh, their approach this year was to try this. Um, so for those two entities, they would be there. Uh, they'd also be working together with um, some of our special ed students that had to help to run the popcorn uh, vending last year. So that relationship would continue, and uh, Kari's continue to work with them. And some of the other things noted are really uh, banners for Impro, Mosquito Youth Football, uh, Maddie's, the Pops, Indian Motorcycle, and Burkhart. So a couple of the commitment letters are there. Um, otherwise, the Red Iron really spearheaded the whole banner um, approach. Uh, we'll hang the banners next or this upcoming week in time for the games on Friday. Uh, obviously, we need more approval before we come those up, and the board policy is linked to the item here. And so one that is not included is, um, let's see, Mosquito Tire and Auto. So that just hasn't been solidified. So with the attachment, you'll see that there are eight listed, and there's only six in the board doc. Um, it's because uh, Mosquito Tire and Auto were just not ready to move forward with them. And the Stadium Improvement Project, having their own um, banners, are included in the, in the eight that are uh, attached, just so. Know the Any questions, comments, side remarks? So can you, so just so I have this right, sure. so Maddie's until the concessions or through this whole season? The whole season. Well, the whole season. Yes. And so Maddie's is going to make, who's going to make the money? Maddie's. 
And they don't, they're not going to share their... They're paying $2,000 for the rights to do that. Okay, then they'll keep whatever yeah. they make. Yeah. Okay. Will that be the only concession stand? Yes, for their agreement. For, that's what they want. Can we, uh, will Maddie's share with us how much they make? I doubt it. Hmm. We could make that. We could make that request. This is kind of a one-year stop, yeah, I think. It's it is one be year, so we see how it is. What we did do is we looked at how much we have on record that we, we, uh, we um, the gridiron um, earned last year. I think year. Band did it last year, didn't they? No. Well, band, uh, band manned it. They manned it, yeah. yes, but the uh, gridiron actually organized it okay. as far as like the money and all that. And what did what did Ryan say? It was fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred dollars for the season. So this is two thousand dollars. In revenue or profit? Profit. Profit. And then um, I think the year before that it was more and that was when AFS um, still had it. It was about forty four thousand. So Okay. So we're going to use this year maybe just to see how yeah. this goes, because I know there's this continuing dialogue of who gets dibs right. on the concession stand, which can be quite a good money maker for some entity. Right. Mm -hmm. So the agreement right now with Gridiron, so the board is clear, is that all of the money for concessions, regardless of who it goes to the turf project. So, but that will change once the turf right. project is done. Yeah, and then the something next will have to be decided. MPC, right. Yes. The, okay. The next. Okay. Facility project. So, is there a is there a uh, a price? I guess uh, before you could go there and what for two bucks get a hot dog and uh, so yeah. And now it's going to be a nine dollar hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. I'm just right. wondering, is that yeah. so that the district's okay with that? That people are going to triple their cost possibly. I don't know what the cost would be, but... Well, um, wouldn't you hope that if they're priced too high and they don't make sales, that they'll wait till the last game and see what their prices are, <laughs> right? Maybe it'll keep going down. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, if I mean, they don't I get guess. sales... They'll set it where people will buy. Yeah. yeah. I guess. Okay. So, and just to share what Gridiron is looking to do, and certainly this is something different. We're looking outside the box. So they want to create a different sort of atmosphere at the game. They want it to be, you know, sort of an event. So that's why they have this you know, the motorcycle and Maddie's popcorn. I'm sorry, Pop's popcorn and stuff like that. So they're just trying to create something different. So we want to try it for a year. Certainly, mm -hmm. make sure that nobody's at a loss from, from last year's games. And so, working with um, vocational warriors is very important. And working with band and. So, vocational warriors will continue to participate. Yes. Okay. Yes. And if this were a continuing relationship with the next year, they would operate out of the concession stand. They would bring all their utensils, bring all their own stuff, and just use this Maddie's. And board. would they still, Maddie's would still Maddie's use, would this still year, use the, the concession stand. Really? Yeah. Would they use a concession stand this year? If it were done at time. Yeah. Sure. Right. Otherwise, they're going to yeah. operate out of the Butler building, which is where that brings its cost sub substantially. Because his, his truck is all set up and ready to go. Yeah, he just had some, like, if it was a long term agreement, he had a few things, you know, that he would require in that area, like a refrigerator. You know, yeah, they would require like a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So, this list they have of banners, you know, if they sell another, say, five of them next week, is, are they going to come back again, or is this it for the year? They haven't okay. came forward with anything else at this time, so it would have to. Come so this back. might be it for the year. Could be, but if they if they come back with anything else, we can come back. Okay. Yeah, well, because don't... for the numbers I see here, I mean, I'll break check out today. <laughs> Quite <laughs> exactly. honestly, I mean, but they 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 gave us no indication that they weren't going to create any additional banners throughout the year. They just wanted to get these for sure okay. included for the start of the season. But yeah. One of the other things that we that I didn't know was a Indian motorcycle that they were going to have um, kind of towards the east end of the stadium. It'll be on display for um, anybody to see. It can only be revved uh, prior to the game, so they can actually run it and see how that runs. Um, another thing that they're doing this year is um, season passes for ticketing. So the top two east uh, levels are going to be roped off for season tickets, and that'll be run through the activities office, which they can do through online ticket sales too. So as of today, we have 12, but if they sold out all seats, it would be approximately uh, $20,000 that they would bring. So. Um, 
How much is season tickets? Set that question before the meeting. I didn't get a reply. Okay. <laughs> And that's the Green Air Club that sets that, or? They would then reimburse us for the initial ticket price. So if the ticket prices are three or four dollars, we would still get that cut of that as the normal ticket price, and then the rest of it would go towards turf. Is that the price going into the um, I think that's activities office for the tickets. And so the revenue for that continues to stay with the district ticket prices. That's always been. Well, technically, it all stays with the district if it's going towards the turf anyway. Mm -hmm. um, oh, the motorcycle thing. So I read more into that. Oh, they have insurance and liability. I mean, it's that scares me a little bit. <laughs> It's part of the agreement that that's going to be required. I mean, yeah, amounts that they have to have. This is our, yeah, we've been working with our liability carrier to ensure that they have the right amounts of not only liability, but also property in case anything happens to our property. So there's a number of things that they have that they have to be aware of and have in order for that to happen. And we're quoting then all of it, and then it's going to be placed by Friday, or they're not going to be there Friday? Well, we haven't received anything yet as far as insurance, so. So just when, yep. if we approve this tonight, we make it Absolutely. What are they doing? They're having essentially more people set up on a purple um, dyno so they can drive it and run it through the games and everything. So is this being done just during like before the game or after the game? Only like before the game. game. It will be done during half time. Yeah. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Moving on to discussion items, 10A, 2017-18 preliminary budget. Anything new in the budget? No, there's no news for the state. We're still in, in limbo. Fox kind of kind of screwed it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I heard you were going to have a budget any day now. I really thought by June 30th you were going to have numbers, but you know, we're, just, very we're just waiting for the good news. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess on that, I have, or at least I talked to our state senator. He doesn't think that the stuff that would affect us is really going to change from what's being thrown out there. Yeah, you know, it sounds There's different like, proposals yeah. been thrown out that these think they're getting traction, so. Mm -hmm. But until it's passed. You, you know, never know. So. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to item 10B, administrative guidelines for exchange, not in immigrant and visitor programs. So um, actually, we thought we had an administrative deadline surrounded our foreign exchange program, but um, we didn't. And so this is just really our practice um, in written form. So this went through the high school, it went through the advisors for our AFS um, program, and this is where it's settled at. And we just have to, if the board has any comments about it, but it is, it's very much in line with what we've done. Um, we just didn't have it written out in the OLA. Um, Essentially, if there's space, we're going to include students, and um, if they're aligned with a program that is outside of um, the WIA's list, essentially, they would have to go through a process to be approved that's longer term, you know, takes six months or so to do. So, again, this is nothing really new, it just needs to be in writing. And we'll bring so it back for action. What is the WIA's involvement that is trying to make sure we're not bringing in like a winner soccer player to keep Yeah, they involved? actually have, they do some betting, and so it just allows districts to have that extra set of uh, guidelines, and they uh, create a list of organizations that they feel comfortable with. And yeah, they have to do some very good things. It doesn't, so they do have their own policy to follow. All right, um, anything else on that? Anyone needs to add or have brought back? Moving on to 10C, resolution calling for a special meeting of the school board electors. Um, obviously, we don't need this, so we just we need to do nothing with this. Moving on to 11, information follow-up. I have a couple of requests. Um, I was looking on the website, and if you can't, Kelly, if you can't talk about this now, or if you want to talk about it later, or whatever. I was looking on the website. Um, are there some people here that have different titles now? Such as 
Jeremiah? Yeah. Was he always the director of human resources? No, he's the director of um, operations. That actually changed uh, last year. And as we kind of move people around, we just kind of adjust. So, for example, I just mentioned that Jeremiah is um, taking on some of the responsibilities related to um, the, what do you call it, the uh, additional, all the uh, revenue sources, the, the different sources related to that. He's also taking on more responsibility related to our support staff, human resources. So he works with human resources custodians, and so he's gonna bring some of the processes that he works with with custodians with aides as well, for example. So it's really not, you know, a director of operations. He's had that title for That it. part I was familiar with, the, the human resources part I was not yeah. familiar with. Yeah. He's, we always talk about how we all do human resources, but what would you say? Let's talk about that all fine. Okay. Okay. I have one other question, too. Um, are we getting some extra bleachers brought in for football games? Yes. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so um, we've always talked about having a student section yep. for students. Um, so we are going to try renting some bleachers this uh, upcoming season that will be in the south end zone. So we're hoping that really opens up um, just our general seating for spectators and is a win-win for everybody and adds to the game experience as well. So are you going to make them sit there? Make them, you know, well, yeah, I'm just wondering, like, what if they don't want to sit there? I suppose there's no make No, I don't think they okay. But I think it would be a good spot for band to be housed because currently they kind of sit on the track or okay. the right. South, so. That might be a good experience. So if you get the really popular kids to sit there, then maybe everybody else will follow? Well, it's not, it, actually, that won't be an issue to get them to sit there and just talk to the couple kids that run this that, right. that Twitter page. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, will that be in place for Friday? No, yeah, it's actually yeah. Okay. I, um, I, I made this suggestion a couple of years ago, and it appeared to fall on deaf ears. So I think I heard you. I think this is a great idea. A number of us did. <laughs> and Jeremiah, will somebody like be there to? I mean, yes. not that they wouldn't notice it, but that they know that they can actually sit there. Yeah. So Ryan, coming from Oconomowoc, they did this, so they were he was able to refer the whole process to us to how to go about it. So we're gonna have stanchions in front of it and people supervising. So uh, according to him out there, they never had any issues, but we will still be cognizant to the possibility. Boy, it would be great to see if there's room. Then. I think she's talking about getting. No, them getting them in there. Oh. I see. Yeah. Like. No. You know, because it's new, so they might think right. well, maybe that's reserved for the season ticket holders, you know, no, the new no, stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, they were all met together as far as operational plan for the okay. stadium and stuff, so they have maps and everything. So, yeah. okay. Good, thank you. So they'll announce it. Nice job. You've got school on. Oh, no, that's before school starts. I'm guessing it's on school Twitter. Starts. I can look right now, but I bet it's on their Twitter page. Then. Well, if not, put it on there. Yeah, I can do that too. Mm -hmm. I won't because I don't know the specifics of it. Uh, those were the items that I had for information follow-up. Thank you. Okay. And I have one. Yep. Um, in the minutes from uh, July 17th, under fiber network, optic network, it says that Tony Spence stated that E-rate application has been submitted and he anticipates an answer in early August. Do we have an answer? As of today, we do not. Because it's mid-August now. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's in the hands of the federal government, so that's hard, it's hard to know when they're actually going to come back. Well, you said early August. Anticipated, yeah. yeah. That was the 90 days that you rate said is... We'll get back to you, but as we knew from last he, year. He did hearing. clarify that also, you know, that could come any time. So I was hoping for it, that question. It wasn't the lock Okay, yet. I'll ask in two weeks and we'll see where we're at. <laughs> Hopefully we'll have a better answer. <laughs> I think we'll have an answer. I'm not sure it's going to be what you want it to be. <clears throat> any other information? Anything else? Any questions on project updates? Everything's moving along. Um, I have been posting on, um, if you are on Facebook, there's a Mosquito News and Information thing. I've been posting pictures, uh, aerial pictures of the sites, um, getting a lot of positive feedback from the community. I feel like seeing the progress going on, and it keeps, except for like one or two stupid comments, um, they're all by and large very positive. And You've been doing that? Yes. I'm having trouble sharing those. Are you locking out the share? No, it's not that. It's how you have to share from a public site. Like 
the first steps. It's not just a shortcut. So. so a couple things. Facility tours. Uh, we do have set times on Thursday, 7.30 and 8.30 for Mill Valley and Skeagle Lakes. Certainly welcome. If you do plan on coming, make sure you let Jeremiah or I know that you are coming so that because it, sometimes it just gets canceled because of one reason or another. So we make sure that um, somebody's there to um, support that effort. But also we can we can create a we can coordinate a, a tour outside of those times and date the day too. So feel free that if you want to see it. And is there interest in like doing a group tour that you guys can't make? I mean, obviously. We all have jobs, so this might not work for everyone, but at some point during the project, if you want to do it like midterm or something like that, that we well, said. Well, it would be a good time when we do our, our uh, well, the lakes we want for Mill Valley when we hold our annual meeting, our travel meeting. Mm -hmm. That would be a good time, I think. Are we doing our annual meeting there this year? Is that going to work? The rotating board meeting? Yeah. You mean the rotating? We are going to be at Mill Valley, okay. yes. We had to switch it from, we just switched it last week, Mill Valley and the Ski Wall, so I can't remember. It's either the end of November or the beginning of December. So have you done um, this? Well, actually, yeah. I mean, they're so moving we could be, we could be December. In yeah. I think it's over the break, though, that they're moving, right, Jeremiah? They're making the adjustment. Uh, over winter break. Winter break, yeah. So it'll be before that. But you'll still be able to walk through and see what they're building. Okay, um, and then the other thing is, just so you know, as you might recall from our last board meeting, there was a request to have some engineering done quickly or so that they could have the renderings, um, and there was a contingency from the Muskego Youth Football that we have some plan that would um, create you know, this exclusive right to use the, the field if it's church. We have we, we provided them with a um, sample of what that agreement could look like, but we have not received anything back yet. So that's why it's not here in writing right now. So we haven't moved forward with the engineering at this point. So, so right. on-site clinic. No updates, just the information. We're still continuing to grow in usage. Oh, I think we had 165 visits in June. Um, what are our hours there? Yep. Oh. Um, Mondays 7 to 1, uh -huh. Wednesdays 9 to 6, and Fridays 7 to 1. Okay. So has there been any feedback from staff on not hard to get there? Uh, there has been some. Um, we do a survey after every appointment that people can participate in, and a lot of comments are um, they would like more evening hours. Mm -hmm. um, which we can do. Uh, we can make adjustments to the schedule. We can work with Jenny within the clinic to, to see what her, you know, what her schedule looks like and what we can do. Um, if we do evening hours, though, um, then we can't do the morning ones, and the morning ones are utilized quite often. More around noon. Noon is the most common time. Obviously, it's during lunchtime and everything like that. So we could look to shift one more day into the evening. Um, there's also been requests for Saturday hours. Okay. So, yeah, I don't but know. we're gathering all that feedback to see if we need to make adjustments, at, you know, kind of after okay. we've been up and running for a bit. Yeah, because I don't know what our staff is saying, but I was um, speaking to a member of staff members, I think, at Elmbrook. Did they just put one in or had one last year? Or? They just switched vendors. <laughs> okay. But they've had one for a while. And mm -hmm. their complaint from the users there was, it's great we would use it, except there's no night hours and mm -hmm. it's hard for them to get there. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Yeah. yeah, and actually the appointments, there was there were a total of 165 visits this month, and Friday is the most popular day, and 7 a.m. the most popular time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every month it differs depending on you know the time of year and the illnesses that are occurring at that time. <laughs> we do have the HRAs running through the clinic also, the health risk assessments. So um, that could be shifting some things too for people. But. Do we have certain levels that we're looking at maybe expanding the hours we get a certain point? Yeah, so right now, um, and again, that's why we have to play with the times a little bit, um, because right now we're not utilizing the full capacity that we have within the hours that are established. So. For instance, um, Jenny, when she's at the clinic, if she knows she doesn't have an appointment, we do have an MA on site. 
um, if there is somebody that calls her and says, I can't get to you, but I really would like to do this, that, or whatever, or I need this prescription, she'll actually go to them at the buildings if she has time available, and then there's somebody still in the office that can call her back if there's a walk-in. Um, so she tried to utilize that, utilize that time as much as possible. Um, but we would have to definitely use all slots. All, yeah, I would say at least 90% of the slots that are in existence before we'd expand hours. Otherwise, we're paying for them to not do anything. Right. You know, so. All right. Moving on to item 12, vote for closed session. Census Act 2019.51C for the purposes of considering employment, promotion, compensation of specific employee over which the board has jurisdiction, specifically case evaluation, and Wisconsin Statute 19.851E for the purposes of the purposes of.